How interesting the songs, the two songs that our sister and the children sang together. One talks about Joshua, the name of the Lord, Joshua. And uh, as equates that to the friend among thousands, that you can even have thousands of friends, but none of them can compare to the friend that you have with the Lord. And also, the children also sang that song that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And it's interesting because until you realize that Christ really have redeemed you and I from the cause of the law, you will see that there's nothing called generational cause that will affect you anymore once you're in Christ. Amen? Because there are some people that still believe that there's a particular cause that run in the family that might affect them at a particular age. And they are looking forward to that. Because people around them have been frightened by that. Turn somebody and say, I've been redeemed. You have to believe it because that's what Jesus said. Galatians chapter 3. Paul wrote concerning that victory of redemption that Christ did for us. Verse 13. Said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And you could see that evidently that Jesus actually took away your curse, my curse, and put it on himself. Because he was the one that was hung on the tree for your sake and for my sake. Is that not the case? Is that not the case? So why would there for be anyone that is following Jesus today still believing that as a family cause that can affect them? They do not believe the scripture. The scripture says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, cost is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Every time you see that, you must celebrate what Christ has done for you, for me, on the cross. It was not in vain. Amen. I've been redeemed. And so, Father, we thank you for the work of redemption through Christ. Even as we prepare ourselves to hear your word for this day, we pray, O oh God, that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. And the eyes of our understanding be enlightened to know why you have saved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Matthew 5, 24. Matthew 5, 24. Leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. It's very interesting because you think at times that just because you have an offering, you have an offering for the Lord, that's all that matters. I've come to tell you that there are some offerings that God will not accept for one reason or the other. It's not because it's not big enough, but God will not accept some offering regardless of their size because the motive was wrong. 
Leave your gifts there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Can you just imagine somebody coming to church of the Lord and you have malice against people? There are some people in your life that you don't talk to at all. You hate them with a passion. And you say you are a believer. And you are coming to the Lord with offering. God will not accept that offering. Because the heart from which it is coming is polluted. There are some behaviors that will attract divine favors, brothers and sisters. And will bring blessings to us. If you are the one that will make the move and change things. Otherwise, your offerings and your sacrifices are soiled and disgusted before God. They're even cursed and unacceptable to God. And that is one of the reasons why there has been no answer to prayers. Because even the accuser of the brethren, who is that? Satan will begin to accuse. Call yourself a pastor. Is that how pastors of the living God should behave? You call yourself a sister. Is that what sister that are not married? Should they be having that relationship with a married brother? And you call yourself a brother. Is that how married brothers should be having prayer partners with women that they are not married to. Hello. And you come to church with offering. Your offerings are soiled and disgusting. Look at the Amplified Bible of the same version of the same verse. It says, leave your offering there at the altar and go. First, make peace with your brother. Turn somebody and say, first, make peace. There are first things first. There are first things first. You don't leave first thing and make them second or third when I have time. First means first. It says, first, make peace with your brother. If it doesn't matter, making peace before giving God offering. Jesus would not have mentioned it through. But because it matters, Jesus is now telling us first things first. Should we take his word for it? Hello? First make peace with your brother or your sister. And then come and present your offering. If it has nothing to do with the offering that we give to God, God would not have mentioned it. True? But because it has first thing first to do with our offering, Jesus here mentioned it. First, make peace with your brother. And then come and present your offering. Can you just imagine me as a pastor and I, I'm having malice with some people I hate them with a the passion. And I'm praying. Do you think God will hear my prayer? That would be this, a, 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 a misbehavior. The same thing to you as well. If you call yourself a believer and you have a malice, you hate some people with a passion. And you said, you shrug it off. Doesn't matter. It matters. Because you know it. And first thing first, make peace with your brother so that your prayers will not be hindered. If you understand that, say amen. Say amen. I told you. Making peace is the first step in building relationships. First thing first. It's not the money. Now, the size of the offering or the gifts, it is making peace with someone 
that you have some fracas with that matters to God. Another translation of the Bible, God's word translation says, leave your gifts at the altar. First go away and make peace with that person. Then come back and offer your gift. So you make the move to change your ways. Be the one to make that move. The title is Change Your Ways. Change Your Ways. How can we be reconciled to God if we don't change our ways? How can we effectively become the ambassadors for Christ if you have so many broken relationships here and there? It is not the offering that matters to God, although he loves a cheerful giver. It is the reason behind what you give, your motives that matters to God. What was your motive for coming to church today? To see sister or brother? No. Because your motive will determine what you get in the house of God. If your offering is even big, but with a bad motive, then your offering will become unacceptable to God. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 to 7, Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 to 7, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Next verse. Next verse. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Keep going on to seven, please. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, or you should rule over it. I love that. You should rule over it. You should rule over it. You and I can rule over the things, the choices that we make. We can rule over the choices that says, don't talk to her. Who do you think you are? Don't talk to her anymore. No, we can rule over that. Cain brought an offering to the Lord. Abel also brought an offering. Both of them brought offerings. Verse 4 and 5. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance, that is, his mood, fell. Now you know why some are moody. It's because they are angry. There are some questions we have to find out. Number one, why was Cain angry? Verse 6 and 7, please. The one translation, the contemporary English version says, the Lord said to Cain, what's wrong with you? Why do you look so angry? If you had done the right thing, 
you will be smiling. But you did the wrong thing. And now sin is waiting to attack you like a lion. Sin wants to destroy you, but don't let it. So you could see the answer to that question in verse 7. Why was Cain hungry? Because God said, if you had done the right thing, you will be smiling, but you did the wrong thing. Cain was angry because of what he did, true? So, are you angry? Is there someone here that is angry with himself or with herself? What have you done that is making you angry? If you undo, undo what you have done and redo it properly, you will not be hungry anymore. Simple as that. You will have thought bringing offering is the right thing to do. Yes, it is, but with the wrong motive, change your ways. At times, you think God doesn't see what we are doing secretly. He does. He does. And many a times we have to repent. We have to ask him to forgive us because we ourselves know what we have done. And this is why I'm pleading with us to reconcile with God. What we give to God is our worship. But our motives must be clear from the start. If I'm going to sing, my motives must be right. I'm not singing so that people can know that I can sing. If I'm coming to church, my motive must be right. I'm not coming to church to please people. I'm coming to church to hear from God and to serve him. Coming to church is an act of worship. And that determines how soon you get to church or how late. It's worship. Psalm 24, verses 3 to 6. Psalm 24, verses 3 to 6. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? Verse 4. Can we read that together? Verse 4. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Let's read it together, please. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up a soul to an actor, nor sworn deceitfully. Verse 5 says, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of the salvation. Now you know the criteria that God uses to give us blessings. Amen? You see, it. God is not partial. Verse 6, this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Seller. Seller means think on this. Blessings we received from God are his righteousness. That is, they are the right things God does for those who fulfill that criteria of his. God gives us what is right for us. And there are two keys Two keys to receiving righteous blessings from God. Number one, clean hands. And number two, a pure heart. What is number one? Clean hands. And number two, a pure heart. Are your hands clean? Do you have a pure heart? A pure heart will not go after Idols. Idols are things that you put before God. Idols are the things that you cherish more than God. Psalm 51 verse 10, David wrote, Psalm 51 verse 10, 
Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I read the New International Version of the Bible. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. A steadfast spirit is one that when it comes to coming to church, he or she will come on time. Because where you have a role, you have a function. But if you don't have a role, you don't have a function before God. These are the things that matters to God. A pure heart, when it's time to pray, he or she is ready. What else would I do if I don't pray? When it's time to read the Bible, it's not the time to be texting on the phone. God is watching. Where else will you hear this word if it's not in the church? If you don't hear this in the church, that means the church is not a living church because they don't tell you the truth. Amen. Nor sworn deceitfully. Let's look at that. Nor sworn deceitfully. A pure heart doesn't do that. What does it mean to swear deceitfully? To swear falsely. To be a false witness. To say, yes, I saw it. When indeed, you did not see it. That is not like Christ. So as ambassadors for Christ, therefore, we have made a choice to follow Jesus and not to follow the crowd. We should not tell lies. It is not Christ's love. Verse 4 of that one says in that Matthew, uh, sorry, in that Psalm, it says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart, that's Psalm 24, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Those with clean hands, brothers and sisters, are those who will not engage in signing for checks, or defrauding people, Yahoo, boys online. They will not do that. You see? It's not being smart. They are killing their conscience with such practices. It is those who are not doing this sort of thing that God says shall receive blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from God. Come to somebody and say, change your ways. Someone in the early church refused to make that change. He used to be a sorcerer, and yet people feared him, and he carried that faith, that respect into the church of the new covenant. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 17. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. His name is called Simon or Simon the sorcerer. Verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money. Next verse. Saying, give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God 
could be purchased with money. Can the gift of God be purchased with money? No. Verse 20. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. So one of the things I do as a pastor is every day of my life, every moment, with the help of the Lord, I ensure that my, my heart is right before God. Who knows when rapture will take place? Nobody knows. I don't want to be left behind. What about you? And that is why being cautious and alert is very important. How can you undo what has been wrong? Verse 22. Repent. What is repent? Repent is not only for sinners that do not know God. Repent is also for believers that know God for pretending as if all is well when all is not well. Repent means to make a 360 degrees return, to make a roundabout turn from the way you are going before, before you, you are enlightened, and you now turn back from that way and you now go to the way that God is showing you this is how God measures our readiness to receive blessings from him so repent therefore of this your wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you so repent is not only Change your ways, change your thinking as well, and change your action. Because if you change your thinking and you don't change your actions, your ways cannot be changed. But if you change your thinking and you change your action, your ways will be changed. Amen? You might say, well, pastor, I'm not a wicked person. But you know that a wicked one is someone whose heart is not in God. Is your heart in God? Hear what Jesus said in Matthew 15. Matthew 15 verse 8. These people whose heart is not in God, he said, these people Matthew 15, verse 8. Draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips for their heart is far from me. And that is why it's important as followers of Christ that we check our heart every second, every minute, whether our heart is in the right place or not. You are doing lip service if you don't follow God from your heart. I will do it, I will do it. But your heart is telling you to do this. But you are saying, I will do it, I will do it. I'm procrastinating. That is lip service. Matthew 24, as I begin to run. Matthew 24. Jesus gave us a catalog of events that will happen towards the end of time. And this end of time, towards that time as well, a rapture, a second return will have taken place. So in Matthew 24, he gave us a catalog of what to look out for to tell us about the preparation towards his return and the end of time. Two different things. His return is not the end of time. His return, the second return, second coming of Jesus, which is which we call second return, 
will not be the end of time. But then what will happen that will help us to know that his second coming is imminent? He told us in verse 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Look at that. Matthew 24, verse 12. Matthew 24, verse 12. It said, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So because evil will increase, which is already happening, don't let that lawlessness or evil deceive you and say, oh, many are doing it anyway. Because that is what the scripture is warning us about. That that is the trap of the devil. There will be wicked problems. And because of this, uh, this uh, prominence of the wicked problems, the love of many will do what? Wax cold. They will stop coming to church, which is already happening. They will stop witnessing, winning souls, which is already happening. They will condone those, those sinners around them rather than telling them off, which is already happening. Because that is what he's saying. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Don't let that be you. Amen? Because many means a lot of people. But still, it cannot be, it must not be you. It must not be me. We might be in church, but not everyone love God. He says, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Not many, not few. They will commit sin. Because sin will be very common. A common thing to do. She is doing it. He is doing it. Even in the church. So that will be a justification for some to now do it. But is that not what Jesus has warned us about? Verse 13. But he who endures to the end. That means me. Does that mean you as well? That means you as well. But he who endures to the end shall be shall be saved. May you endure to the end. How do we endure in these wicked problems? By renewing our minds with the word of God. Consensuous following God through his word. You cannot follow God shabbily. You have to follow God wholeheartedly. This is what will keep us safe in this insane world. And if you say it's getting better, it's not getting better. It's going to get worse. Because the scripture says lawlessness will abound. And because of that, the love of many works good. They will stop coming to church. They will stop praying. They will stop taking their Bible. How many people carry their Bible to church these days? Those are the things. Because the word of God is very powerful. And if you say you carry it in your mobile phone, wait until you run out of battery. That's so all you do. <laughs> you know? But if you carry your Bible with you, you see, come rain, come sunshine, you still hide it from the rain anyway. And your Bible is there. Amen? Oh, it's old fashioned. I'd rather be old fashioned with God than be new fashioned and don't have God. Hallelujah. So, brethren, we all need to pitch our tents with God. 
I want you to be reconciled to God. I want you to give your heart to God and stay there. I want to hear from God. There are a lot of deceivers today, deceiving pastors, deceiving bishops, deceiving apostles, deceiving prophets, deceiving evangelists. Are these not the signs of the end times? As written in that book of Matthew 24. But how can you know who to follow? Follow Jesus. Tell somebody say, follow Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus and his teaching, you will not miss it. You will not miss it. Your heart will not be troubled. Bible says because of the things that is going to be happening in the world, economic downturn, downturn, economic hardship, nations against nations, kingdom against kingdom, famine, earthquake, wars, rumors of wars. So the heart of many will fail them because their heart is not in God. Don't let that be you. If you don't know him as God, now is the time to do so. Follow his teachings anyway. And believe the word of God. Lastly, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, our theme. Where we got our theme for the month from. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Now then, we as ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You know, God called some of us as a to follow him. As a church worker, as a minister, as a children leader, as a youth leader, as a minister, as a pastor, as a house fellowship leader, as a choir leader, God called every one of us with a role. But is that what we're doing? Paul is here pleading. Don't sit on the fence any longer. We'll implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. The New Living Translation of the Bible read, we speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to him. Come back from your heart. That which God have told you to do donkey years ago we start doing it. Tomorrow might be too late. Make that change and come back to God. Yes, lawlessness will abound. You haven't seen nothing yet. Lawlessness will abound. But for the sake of the elect, God said he will cut short the time. For he that endures to the end shall be saved. May you endure to the end. I pray for everyone that have received this word. And God will give them the grace to endure to the end. You will not be blown apart by every wind of doctrine. You will not be tossed to and fro like children. But you will be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Change your ways. Let us pray. With every head bow, with every eyes close, I'm pleading with you. Where is your heart today? Where is your heart? Is your heart in God? Are you really, can you really tell God right now that you are faithful? You have been faithfully following me. 
It's okay to admit you have not been. But it's not okay to continue to say, I've been when you are not. Why not to talk to God? I believe the church is a place for therapy. The church is a place whereby people are clean. People are made clean. The church is a place where the Holy Spirit heals people. The church is a place whereby there's reconciliation. The church is a place whereby there is no malice. The church of Christ is a place where there is no malice. I don't know of any other church. But if you call yours a church and there is malice, then God is not there. But for the Spirit of God to be in a place, things must be done decently and in order. Where is your heart this afternoon? I want you to come back to God. Remember what God told you this time last year on the year before. You haven't done it. And if you have done it, have you made a review? How far have you gone? Or have you stopped and abandoned the project? The lives of many are waiting on you for that. I want you to come back to it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to someone among you. Please talk to God. When the ways of a man pleases God, God will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. You don't have to be angry anymore. You only need to undo the wrong thing and begin to do the right thing. Then your offerings will be accepted before God. Jesus said, whoever come to me, I will know why he's cast away. Let's take this opportunity to come to him. You know, every day we need to read the Bible. Every day you need to pray. You need to grow in the knowledge of God. He said, till we all come to the unity of the faith. God wants us to come to that unity of the faith. He wants you to understand him. He wants to equip you with knowledge. And you have to submit yourself to his word on a daily basis. Then your lives will be changed before you. Is there anybody here that you've gone far, far away like the prodigal son and he came back to himself and he said, why will I be perishing here? When even the servant of my father are doing well at all. Let me go back to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. Is it possible for you to make me one of his servants? And the father had compassion on him. He celebrated that my son who was lost, but now is found. Let God rejoice over you for coming back to him. Let God rejoice over you for giving your heart again back to him. I need to talk to him. Say, Father, I'm sorry. I've gone astray. Please, is there a place in your heart for you, for me, in your heart? Is there a place in your heart for me? Forgive me. Accept it back. Willing to change my ways. Please forgive me. From today, I denounce every unrighteousness in me. That's what you said I should not do. I will not do them from today. And that's wrong that I have done. Help me to do them. And start to do what is right. So that my offerings... My worship will be acceptable before you. Is that somebody talking to God? Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. But Jesus, give me a new heart. And a 
in the spirit. I want to follow you. I want to make that move to change. I surrender how to you. Write my name in the book of life. Be my Lord and Savior. Redeem me from every curse of the Lord. Lord, I thank you. Begin to thank you. Let's stand up on our feet as we surrender all to you. To be my blessed Savior, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender. To thee, Lord, on to thee, my blessed. Have you done that? Now you feel that sigh of relief from your mind. The body is taken away. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That condemnation has been taken away. Now you have a sigh of relief. And you need to walk in the light of the Lord for today. Lord, I pray for her. I pray for him. I pray for that person that are genuinely Surrender all to you. And I've decided to accept you into their heart as Lord and Savior. Please write their names in the book of life. From today, make them a channel of blessing. That through them, their families will be saved. Through them, their friends will be saved. Through them, the community that they belong to shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we are praying. Come on, clap those hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your seat.